Hi and welcome, welcome back to my channel. I am Amélie and on Gomli we explore creativity and today I want to talk to you about Berenice Abbott. I have two books that I found to help me uh, do this video and you'll see she is so inspiring. She is a model of determination. She uh, was not waiting for opportunities. She wouldn't take no for an answer and I think her story is very interesting. So that's why I wanted to share it with you. Let's start. So Berenice Abbott was born in 1898 in Ohio. And at the age of 20, she moved to New York where she wanted at first to be a journalist. And soon she was more driven by art. She met Marcel Duchamp, Man Ray, and all these artists told her USA was not the place to be, to be an artist and they all went to Paris. So in Paris, they all hang out together. The rich people had their portrait made by the artist and they all hang out together and they all helped each other. And Man Ray had a portrait studio and it went so well that he needed an assistant. Verine said to Man Ray, I could be your assistant. And he didn't think at the time that uh, a woman could do that job. And that's an example how Berenice created opportunities where there was none for women. She actually learned very fast. It was really instinctive for her. And soon enough, she was doing her own portraits during her lunchtime. And very rapidly, she opened her own portrait studio and it was uh, very successful. And Eugène Atget. That's a very important uh, part of her life. Adget was a urban photographer. He wanted to capture the evolution of Paris, how the buildings and how the culture evolved. And in 1927, Adget passed away. And at the time, he was just considered as the great documenter of Paris, but was not considered as an artist. And Berenice was so inspired and knew that uh, there was something else. It wasn't just documentation. And she, uh, as John Malouf did with Vivian Mayer, was passionate and dedicated many hours and years of her life, archive his work and make sure that he become the artist and have the fame that he deserves and she brought to New York his work and by bringing Adget's work to the USA she offered an alternative to the tradition and the more rigid uh, rules imposed by Alfred Stieglitz and it offered more freedom and offered another point of view of art even though her portrait studio worked really well she had a vision she wanted to do as Adget had documented Paris, she wanted to do the same in New York. And so she went back to New York against all the recommendations of the artists that she knew and that told her, no, you shouldn't go because uh, it's the depression. There is no money. No one wants to buy art at that time. And government will not help you. The foundation will not help you either. And that's what happened. She really struggled, but she followed her vision and she was right because she created the project Changing New York and now we can have a different perspective of photography because what was considered before as documentation now is considered as art because as Berenice said, it wasn't only about documenting something. It was photographing and bringing poetry to the subject. And also she says that Art is in the selection, is by selecting something and expressing the subject. And this one, it's for me really amazing to see that. The modernity of this picture, you see all that is photomontage. It's like matte painting. It's not what I would expect from 1930s. And I am very, very uh, amazed to see how advanced and how creative those people were back then. And that's why people didn't understand her and didn't um, at first see that as art because they didn't understand it. And in 1958, again, she created her own opportunity. 
At university, she knew that they needed a photography to explain and show what the different uh, experiments were. And she told them, you need the best and I am the best. And they accepted to uh, work with her. She was a photographer, a researcher, archivist, a teacher, and also inventor. She invented lots of things like a tripod, a mini tripod, a monopod, she also created a jacket with 20 pockets uh, so she could fit in all sort of stuff for photography. Uh, and she also created a stroboscope. Uh, she was very, very creative. So there I think she used a stroboscope that she created herself to be able to uh, see the movement, all the movement uh, of the, of the bow. She mainly used a view camera to shoot architecture. She used that because it helped her to keep the film straight and then the lines of the building that she took were straight as when you look at it. So then she was able to uh, reproduce the realism of what you see. And you see the lines are straighter than if she wouldn't in this picture she didn't use it and you can see the lines are going uh, further towards each other so that was her camera of choice but when she wanted to shoot people she said that she couldn't use that because it was too big when she was uh, taking pictures of people she would take a roliflex but otherwise she would take that and she liked it because it was a slower process and she even did a view camera made it simple book that she wrote also she she talks about how something has to be photogenic to be photographed and on this trip to florida she said that uh, so many things were photogenic, like the composition had to be balanced. Like she said, you can't have like a busy corner and have uh, nothing on the other side. And we can see here how busy this is. And here you still have something to look at. That's only in the 70s, 80s that she gained real fame and uh, financial security which is very far in her life and that shows her determination because she knew her work was art and she knew that uh, she had to do certain uh, projects and she didn't give up and that for me is a really great inspiration and i'm really glad that i had the chance to uh, to discover her story and i hope that you enjoyed it if you did don't forget to subscribe leave a comment or a like that helps a lot the channel and uh, until next time i'll wish you all the best bye take care